So yeah, hi, hi folks, hi, hi everyone. I am Vitaly Bragilevsky. I work at JetBrains as a developer advocate, and I work with the Fleet team to to make Fleet plugins uh, actually happening. So uh, today I'm going to talk about custom Fleet plugins for your Kotlin code base. So just to start, uh, Fleet is a code editor for many, many programming languages at the same time. And uh, it was designed to make nice, to have nice remote development, to have uh, to implement nice collaboration scenarios, things like that. And chances are that you already have your code base in Kotlin, uh, in Kotlin and you manage them with uh, Fleet. And in Fleet, we also have Kotlin multi-platform, we also have Amper to build your projects maybe, and then all this stuff is already there. It is uh, available out of the box. But sometimes you need something else. You need something custom. And this can, this can be different things. Like, for example, you use your own resources in your code base, and you need custom views. Sometimes you want to integrate with external tools which are not available out of the box. Sometimes you want to get some additional information about your code base. For example, what's the total size? Or something like cyclomatic complexity. If you don't know what it is, just in Wikipedia, they tell you everything about that, or AI or something. Abstraction complexity. So sometimes you want to see if your comments are actually relevant to the code. So something custom which is not available. And at this very point, you might need to write a custom fleet plugin. And in fact, it's very easy to do. You just create a repo for uh, the plugin, you write your code, then you write fleet, you can run fleet with a plugin in development, and then you publish it on the marketplace, and then everyone can install it just with single click from fleet itself. Of course, it's something like that, like if you're drawing an all, but uh, I should say one thing here. So fleet plugins are work in progress at this time, so they're not available for everyone. But we're working towards making them available, we're going towards our public uh, preview for plugins, so just uh, uh, in this talk I will show you something how you are supposed to do things like that. And I will use one very simple example of a plugin for fleet, so let me show it to you. So I have Fleet, I have some Kotlin project here, and uh, I have two functions, you can see them. And I have this action which was designed in this plugin, which is called count functions. And it shows this small uh, notification here, and it says that you have two functions in this code base, in this file. And let me, for example, add another function with this name, and at this very moment, you can see that it was changed to three. So you have two functions, and then immediately you have three functions, three top-level functions in this code base. So very simple plugin, and uh, that's exactly what I'm going to present in this talk. So Fleet is a product with very interesting, very modern architecture. Workspace is in the center of Fleet. It manages your project and it knows everything about any other component which is connected to it. We also have one or many front-end components responsible for actually communicating with the user, like views, some actions. You edit your code with front-ends. There is syntax highlighting implementing there. And then there is also back-end part, which in case of Kotlin is IntelliJ back-end, which is a headless service from IntelliJ IDEA, basically, and it does heavy lifting, like indexing, static analysis, advanced code navigation, stuff like that. And if you develop plugins for Fleet, you basically implement some components for the front-end part, for the workspace part, and also for the back-end part. Now, back-end part is basically an IntelliJ IDEA plugin. So we're not talking about it here, because it works right there on back-end. But workspace part and front-end part, they're just parts of plugin and they become parts of Fleet itself. 
and my count functions plugin actually works only on the front end part. So it's called fun counter. And let's see how we can implement something like that. Uh, before starting writing code for Fleet, we have to remember two basic principles of that coding. Principle number one, Fleet is actually a distributed database with reactive queries. Every change that you are doing goes in a transaction. So you write transactions to change everything in Fleet. And you also have reactive queries so that you can uh, query, make a query for something and then you get notifications about changes in that database. And principle number two, Fleet embraces coroutines, structured concurrency, scoped concurrency, everything that you like in Kotlin. It's there in Fleet, so you have to be like professional in that stuff to develop plugins for Fleet. Okay, um, very uh, like this this plugin that I showed you. It's uh, in 100 lines of code, just single file. We have a special class for a plugin, and then several functions for managing notifications for actually counting functions. So let's see what's inside that implementation. So plugin class is just a basic class, very small one. And uh, in general, plugins can implement some API. And in fact, real fleet code base is already, it has a lot of plugins there and some of them provide some API. For this plugin, it's not needed, so it's just unit. My API is just unit, nothing interesting, so we don't provide anything. We just do some other stuff. Then we also have some bookkeeping arguments here, values. It's for loading and unloading plugins. It's for fleet itself. So this class basically is loaded using service loader, like as usual in, in Java uh, GVM. So this is for, for that stuff. And now the most important part of this definition is the load function. Load function is executed when you actually load your plugin in fleet. So every piece of functionality is registered here, this load function. So for example, in this particular example, we have a notification, so we register a category for it, and we also have an action, count functions action. So these two things are right here in this uh, load function, right? Uh, it's very simple to manage notifications. So we have a category, so we register it. So we say like there may be like several files and chances are we have several notifications at the same time. So we need a category for them. So we register it. And we also create notification and then we should think about updating it. So creating notification is very easy. So you create it from an editor and you see that argument there, editor entity above on the first line. So entity, it's a, just some component from a database, basically. So you have an editor. You create a notification for that specific editor. Then you consult editor to just get the name of the file which is loaded into that editor. So you describe all that stuff. And now the most important uh, part here, change. This change block is actually a transaction. So in Kotlin, we define a transaction and in that transaction, we create that notification. And we also do some bookkeeping with this database. For example, with cascade delete call there, we just say, okay, this notification depends on that editor. If editor is deleted, then this notification should be deleted as well. So it's real database and change block is a transaction there. So this function returns a notification and then if you want to update the notification, you need to issue another transaction. So you see change block here again. So you change description, and that means that it will be changed in the database. And it will also be updated in the UI, of course. But uh, so that's an idea. Fleet is a database, and you change everything in that database with transactions. Now, action, the most important part here. We have uh, DSL for defining actions in Fleet. So this is uh, an example of it. So it's an action. And we say that 
for this action, we need an editor. If there is no editor in fleet, then it's impossible to have this action because we, it, it's uh, too tightly connected with it. So we require an editor. Then we say, so if there is no editor, then there will be no that action in the actions list. Then we say, it's a dynamic actions, meaning that if that editor contains a file which is not Kotlin source, then we are not interested. This action will be disabled. So if it's a Kotlin source, we say it right there, then in that case, we define a function which will be executed whenever this action is triggered. And what is actually we are doing when it's triggered? We launch a coroutine, and we launch it in the so-called plugin scope. Do you see that plugin scope argument? That's piece of structured concurrency stuff. So every coroutine is executed inside that scope. So Fleet knows when it loads this plugin, it knows that scope. So if it decided to unload that plugin, then every coroutine will be canceled on this time. So we control every uh, piece of functionality using structured concurrency here. So we launch that coroutine and we actually perform that action. Now remember, what is in that action? So I change some code in file and then this change should be propagated to the notification. So change here, change there. So we need to describe this somehow. And this is actually the core part of this plugin. So this function works with, with an editor. And if you see that, with end it is there. So that means that it will be canceled if there is no editor anymore automatically for us. Now, we create notification using the function that we saw earlier. And we'll say, we do that while the notification is alive. When it's deleted from the database, then once again, this coroutine is going to be canceled. Okay. And now, the central part of that fleet database. Remember that stuff about reactive queries? So we say basically here, query for every change in abstract syntax tree of the file loaded, of the document loaded into that editor. So for every change, we get an asynchronous flow and we need to do some processing with that flow. So query, we say what we are interested in. And then in the second part, in collect latest, so we are collecting elements from the flow. We count functions in the particular abstract syntax tree from that editor, and then we update a notification. So basic idea, we have a query, a reactive database, and we have collecting latest values. Sometimes we can skip some changes, that's fine, because we always have an access to the latest stuff right there. And the final piece of code here is count functions function. So it's basically a very simple exercise in uh, communicating with the abstract syntax tree. So syntax of that file that is loaded into the editor. So we're going to the root, look at the children's, and we're interested in top-level functions only. So that's why that's enough for me. So no much, too much navigation over, over there. And that's it. So below 100 lines of code, we've implemented this uh, stuff for fleet. And of course, it takes much more lines, of course, to implement something much more meaningful, much more sophisticated, but it's still possible. Or will be possible for everyone whenever we are ready with our Fleet Plugins public preview. So the goal of this talk was to make you aware of that stuff. So we are working on it and we will make it open very soon so that everyone can try to implement their own plugins for Fleet. Okay, and uh, thank you very much. And please don't forget to vote if you like it. Otherwise, I'll be fired. Thank you very much, folks. Thanks for coming.